Today, we are going to demonstrate how you can run Security Intelligence, or SEC Intel, on the Juniper MX router. Making Juniper SEC Intel available on the MX series routers is part of Juniper's connected security strategy. Connected security is an acknowledgement of the convergence of networking and security. Integrating security intelligence into network devices such as Juniper's MX series routers enables us to create custom block lists. Blocking command and control traffic and botnets using the MX series routers that many of you already have in your network. Some firewalls can provide botnet and command control protection, but many cannot. Also, many firewalls protecting organizations today are already overloaded, as they are the delivery vehicles for all kinds of security services, such as application firewalls, IPS, web filtering, antivirus, DLP, CASB, and many more. Many organizations also have multiple entry points into and out of their network, which makes protecting against command and control servers and botnets with firewalls only a real challenge. Why not move the task of command and control protection to the edge of your network so that it protects your organization at every point of connection, making your entire network infrastructure a threat-aware network and offloading the need to process that traffic by your firewall? Here, we see on the use case topology that our policy enforcer is downloading command and control threat feeds from our ATP cloud. In turn, the MX router downloads those feeds and adds them to a custom filter list on the router itself. Here we see that by blocking command control traffic as well as botnet traffic at the edge of your enterprise, you're protecting your entire environment at every point of connection. Okay, let's get started. First, log in to a MX router. Here, you see I'm running MX using 19.3R2. Let's look at the configuration, services, and security intelligence. We see here that we are downloading the manifest for the command and control feed from a policy enforcer. Now we can see here the download is successful. Next, let's look at the policy. Here we see we have profile P1, and if we see a security intelligence policy with a threat level of eight or above, then we drop and sample. We will do the same thing for a threat level of 9 and 10. The filter is template 1. Let's start a shell. We're going to drop into the PFE itself. In this case, it is FPC2 and show filters. And here is our filter template 1, the index. Let's look at the filter index. Notice all the command and control IPs that are displayed. Here is an IP that is a threat level 10. So let us take a look at this one. To do so, we go to our Ubuntu client and open a Mate terminal and do an IP root show. Our default gateway is 100.100.13.1 via 100.100.13.50. Now, let's check that we have access to the internet. After confirming that we are in fact connected to the internet, we can ping 222.186.59.197 the IP with a threat level of 10. As it is rolling through, let's take a look at our secure analytics. Let me stop my secure analytics, and I'm looking for a specific log. Here we see from FPC2, PFE underscore FW underscore syslog. Interface is 2 slash 2 slash 1.0. Our source IP is 100.100.13.50. Our destination is 222.186.59.197. The threat level was 8, and the action was drop. It works. For more information, visit juniper.net slash mxsecurity.